Um, what was interesting, I think, about the interview, Isabel, I know you've seen it all now, was there were other things in that interview that I felt were much more newsworthy. One was where he basically called yes. Keir Starmer a terror sympathiser uh, over this uh, banned group. We had that NHS doctor on the show who's, who leads the UK arm of that now prescribed terror group in this country. And he basically called Starmer a terror sympathiser for trying to stop them becoming a prescribed group by acting for them. And the other thing I thought was uh, really newsworthy uh, was the, re the confirmation by the Prime Minister that one of his key five pledges to get NHS waiting list down, which he actually coupled with sorting out the crisis in the A&E, uh, he failed on. Let's take a look. NHS waiting list. We have well, not made enough progress. You failed yeah. on that pledge. Yes. Because you said NHS waiting list will fall. But well, the waiting list is still that. nearly half a million yeah. more than it was at the start of last year. Yeah. So my mother is 79 and she had a heart attack three months ago. And she was taken to a local hospital and she was seen when she got there and then she was put on a trolley in A&E, in a corridor, for nearly seven hours. The heart monitor battery ran out. Nobody fixed it. At one stage, no nurse came for three or four hours. And she was also terrified, of course, having been told you've had a heart attack, that no one was putting her into the unit and actually trying to fix it. Now, once she got up there, the treatment she got was world class. But I, you know, I brought this one picture to show you. That's, you know, that's my mum. And when she really needed the NHS, yeah, eventually the NHS came through. But she could have died on that trolley. And I think that's shocking. Yeah, that is a shocking story. And I'm really glad that she's feeling better now and send her my best. And I'm glad she got the treatment that she needed. This was a Monday night, end. Prime Minister. This wasn't yeah. even the weekend. Yeah. And it's not even a major city. This is Brighton. Yeah. And there were 40-odd people on trolleys in a corridor. Well, you know, I got an email today, which we're, we're trying to uh, corroborate, Isabel, but it was from somebody else at exactly the same hospital whose uh, mother died on a trolley in that A&E and was there for 24 hours. Well, and I, I think this is going on up and down the country. I really want to pick up on that. Yeah, I really want to pick up on that because if I were the Labour Party or any opposition party, I would play that particular clip of your interview on a loop and look at the Prime Minister's Thanks. reaction. Yeah. To me, this is the most insightful bit of the interview. There is something very, very wrong about the Prime Minister's reaction to your story. He just has, he shows no empathy. There is no form of shock in his reaction to your story. He's robotic about it. And that really, really jars with me. And, you know, I am so glad to hear that when your mum was finally taken up onto the ward, that she got the treatment mm. that you described. You said it was world class. Um, but you, in a sense, you were lucky. Look, my mother recently died in an NHS hospital. I am sorry to say that she died in front of a lot of people, that none of us had any privacy. And in the seconds after she died, my sisters and I were taken into a store cupboard because there was nowhere private for us to go. So I wasn't planning on sharing that story, but the Prime Minister's reaction to your story has if you like, triggered me to do that because it was so lacking in any real empathy mm. for the many, many thousands of people tonight who are on hospital trolleys and are not getting the treatment that they deserve. The NHS is failing and he's admitted it and it's failed on his watch. Yeah, well, I'm very sorry about your mum. You and I have talked about that before and it's it incredibly sad for you and I feel very fortunate that my mother was able to come through it. You know, she to have a heart attack in your late 70s and then spend seven hours on a trolley thinking, what is happening to me? With the heart monitor regularly running out of batteries and no one seemed to notice it, it was scary. Awful. Um, Paul, what, yeah. do you, what did you make of that part yeah. of the interview? Again, I was looking at his face and thinking, look, Prime Minister doesn't get to meet a lot of ordinary people. And when he does, you know, you, you were very measured with him. But imagine, you, we can all imagine a voter saying the same story. Right. What would happen in general is that the people behind him would just gently edge him away. Yes. And I think that what, if he can learn anything, it is listen to these ordinary sto stories. I bet every single one of us, including all your studio uh, staff, could tell us the same story. I've got stories of mm. 48 hours in a &E. I've had uh, so many yeah, in the last but, two days. But, it's, but so the NHS is failing. 
It so happens that we've had one party in government for 14 years, but I'd say, you know, there is a long-term pro problem with the NHS. I actually think my hunch, I don't know about you and Isabel, my hunch is that people care a lot more about these stories of everyday hardship mm. uh, than they do about whether the Rwanda scheme deports mm. 200... And they actually care, Paula, more about yeah. the reality of human stories than they do about the over-top-line statistics. You can hear 7.6 million people on a waiting list. Yes. You can hear a and E's out of control. When you actually have a loved one trapped in that nightmare of waiting for a lot to save their life or waiting to get into through A and E. It is terrifying. Absolutely. And I think there's two things here. The first is that you're right, you know, when he when he's approached by a member of the public, we saw it just a couple of weeks mm. ago, and um, he laughed in response to well, that I member think, of the look, public. Fair, he, was, he was called a card, he didn't know what to do. But the, Well that the second, clip was cut unfairly actually. Yeah, they then showed well, the longer the cut. And that also point, happens now. The second point that I wanted to make though was about the disconnect. It's the disconnect that we recognise in this story about your mother. And it's the same disconnect that we recognise in terms of the bed. Mm. We're talking about um, our Prime Minister who doesn't have the capacity to be sensitive enough to understand that when he's asked about making a bet on what is something that for mm. many is a life or death situation, be it about the NHS, be it about Rwanda, that he can just limply shake your hand um, on a policy that we know, or we are being told, aren't we, that he doesn't even agree with, but he's happy okay. to push through. Uh, look, it's I, empty, I, like Isabel, I wasn't going to say this, but I think I will just to be balanced about it, because the idea that he doesn't care, for example, about my mother and what happened to her and whatever facial reaction he showed at the time, I can tell you, he, he sent her a big bunch of flowers yesterday and then he followed up and called her without any recourse to me whatsoever. Uh, called her for 10 minutes and had a really lovely See, chat with the, her. The problem is there. You're you. Mm. You're yeah, of course, high profile. of course. And, and, sure and, that helps. If I'm, but it was such a nice thing to do. Course, you know, <laughs> if only he'd sent my mum a, a bunch of Of course, of but he can't tell every, well, he can't no, exactly. everybody. And, and it, but it's, my point being that it, I don't think he's a heartless the man. Nurses right? and the I don't think he didn't work, care. I don't think he's heartless. No. I think he does care. But I think that, I, you know, I, I give them a little bit of slack politicians for facial expressions when they're being jumped with stuff, which they're not really sure what it's all about. And I can just say that my mother was very touched by both the flowers and the phone call and greatly appreciated what he said to her. Uh, when, and she certainly you... came away thinking this guy does care. Now, I completely accept... I'm a television presenter and it was a big interview, everyone's talking about it and not everyone gets that prime ministerial treatment. But he did do that. And I've not had a prime minister do that to any of my family before. We're not voting uh, for the Conservative Party on the basis of whether Rishi has sent mm. your mum flowers. Of course, I'm um, not expecting that, that, to. That's not I'm what the vote is. No, listen, uh, we, we, we've run out of time. It, but I, I'm simply trying to balance up the he doesn't care narrative, which I don't think is fair. He, he does care. I saw it. I spoke to him afterwards uh, for quite a while, actually, after the interview. He definitely cares, right? Um, but we'll have to What's see whether... What's he doing about it? Well, that, well that, uh, the question is, can, what any, is he doing about can any leader right now fix the NHS is a much bigger question. I'm not sure... He's the, Dharma. Uh, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, and he'll get, he may get a chance for the interview and to prove it. To answer we've, his got to, we've got to leave it there, guys. I'm sorry, we've run out of time. Uh, thank you. Uh, Paula, Paul and Isabel, thank you all very much indeed. I appreciate it.